A lot of people can go to the extremes when it comes to cheating. While most people will simply break up over such allegations, some others will gravitate towards violent fantasies against their partner. But what if those violent fantasies came to fruition, and with a katana of all things? After watching my videos, I'm sure you've come to see that safety is extremely important. Maybe you're even feeling a bit paranoid. Well, I can offer you some security. Internet security, thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN is a service that can encrypt your data online so that you aren't able to be tracked by anyone, criminal or otherwise. It does so by swapping your location with different servers around the world, hiding your real location. Not only does Surfshark keep your data secure by hiding your location, but you can use the changing of your location to your advantage as well. Since Netflix and all other streaming services have different shows available from country to country, you can swap out your country to any other location you like in order to view their library too. Countries like the UK tend to have a bunch of American shows that even the American Netflix doesn't have, like Friends. Just change your location to the UK and boom, now you can watch it all you like. Surfshark offers over 3,200 of these servers in 65 different countries to choose from. If you go out a lot with your laptop like I do, using public Wi-Fi can be a goldmine for all the hackers out there. Think about all of the personal information you put online on a daily basis. Using Surfshark will take care of that problem and secure your data so that you can keep your personal data, like your passwords and credit cards, safe. So why not get started today? Right now, Surfshark is offering 83% off of your subscription and an extra three months for free with the special code DIRETRIP. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee as well, so there's no reason not to give it a shot. So go ahead and check that description below to get your link and get started on Surfshark. Today's story took place in 2019. Let's go to Camas, Washington, a town bordering Portland. The couple we will focus on lived in a quiet area, a nice home on Northeast Garfield Drive. The male member of this couple was Alex Biggie Lovell, age 29, he was a man who spent 12 to 13 hours a day playing PUBG, a video game that has popped up on this channel several times now for some reason. It's almost as bad as Counter-Strike now when it comes to having gaming-related crimes. If you're interested in those, check out People Who Killed People Over Video Games, an older video. I digress, let's move on. Alex was a man who was serious about his gaming game. He did exercises for his hands, his wrists, his shoulders. He even practiced uh, mouse-moving techniques to maximize his ability. I wasn't a sweaty nerd, more of an ethelite, he would say. However, Alex had a girlfriend, 30-year-old Emily Javier. She despised how he played so many video games. But throughout the time they were together, he had come to play video games more and more and more. And she grew increasingly, exponentially, more irritated the less time he spent with her. Alex eventually decided that he wanted to become a professional gamer, which made Emily all the more unhappy. This anger hit critical mass when she found a Tinder app on his phone one night. Now this made her suspicious of him, to say the least. She also found some scratch marks on his back that she found suggestive. She claimed to have found red hairs in the shower drain when her hair was green at the time. But she chose not to confront Alex on all of this. Instead, she decided to hatch a plan for revenge that would get rid of him for good. Was she going to hire a hitman? Uh, buy some poison? Maybe get a gun? No. She went to Vancouver Mall and bought a katana. However, that's as far as the plan went at that point. She was still seething in anger and decided to give herself a week to formulate an actual plan to accompany the sword. She went home and did some research on Google. She looked up how to kill someone with a sword, something which likely yielded very simple results. She bought a couple of plane tickets to Hawaii for her and Alex to have one last trip together. She even wrote up a couple of notes for her mother and her best friend, stating that she was planning to end her life. She wrote a note for Alex as well, but it's not really known when she expected him to read it or what exactly it entailed. It is clear that she intended to end her life in Hawaii, but it's unknown how she planned to take Alex out, if at all. 
it actually would have been possible for her to take her sword to Hawaii with her, as long as it was in her checked luggage and not her carry-on bag. And then, one night, Alex came home around 9 p.m. He didn't pay much attention to her and wanted to go straight to bed. This triggered something in Emily that she could no longer bear. She had hidden the sword on her side of the bed and taped two knives to the back of the headboard in case the sword failed. She gave Alex some alcohol, enough to get him drunk, and let him head to bed. Once he fell asleep, she hid his phone so that he couldn't call for help, while using her own phone to illuminate his neck so that she could see properly. About to deal the blow, she accidentally bumped Alex in the head with the blunt side of the sword. This woke him up. In a rush of adrenaline, he used his limbs to block the sword slashes, and then bear-hugged Emily to get her to finally stop. Even during this bear hug, she grabbed his junk and, as Alex put it, tried to rip them off. He pleaded with her to stop the assault. Eventually, on the verge of passing out, he convinced her to call 911. And she finally did. I just stabbed my boyfriend. Okay, what is the address out. there? Get this Washington. Okay, she's dying. Okay, and tell me. Tell me what happened. Okay. Okay, is he awake? He's dead. I think he's dead. Okay, where did you stab him? No, where, where on his body? Where on his body? Everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. It, can you get a clean, dry cloth or a towel and no, put it right on the wound? Okay. Die. Emily, Emily, where is the knife right now? Emily was hysterical during the call. The operator struggled to get any meaningful information out of her. She refused to go back into the room to check on Alex, or even to apply cloth or bandages to his wounds. The operator asked where she hurt her boyfriend. Everywhere, everywhere, she responded. Then she asked where the knife was, and much to her surprise, I used a sword, responded Emily. The operator repeatedly urged Emily to go back into the home and help her boyfriend, but she adamantly refused. Reality set in, and she realized that, yes, her boyfriend was really dying. In fact, she thought he might be dead already. Officers soon arrived and pushed themselves into the home. They made their way into the bedroom, where they found Alex, curled up in a ball. He had several life-threatening injuries, including some deep wounds to his torso, his neck, and even to the left side of his head. He had deep cuts on his feet and legs as well, along with a fractured wrist. His index, middle, and ring fingers were almost completely severed as well. Alex was rushed to the hospital and Emily was thrown into jail. Covered in blood and crying, she had surrendered peacefully. Her bail was set at a whopping $350,000. Alex was facing a very long recovery, but he stayed in high spirits throughout the whole battle. The attack made headlines all over the US, both because of the weapon Emily used in the attack the severity of the attack itself, and, interestingly, from Alex's personality. Alex oddly took the attack very well and came out in high spirits. Some of the quotes he gave to the media went viral, such as, I saw the look in her eyes, and it scared the living poop out of me. I was just so proud for beating this samurai wannabe crazy lady with hate in her heart. Now, I know a lot of people don't like it when it seems like I'm making light of crimes, but these are actual quotes from the victim himself. This is not me. The feeling I had when I won the fight with my bare hands is just absolutely the best feeling. I've played all the sports, won big games, landed some decent tricks on my snowboard. This was better. I was able to wing chung my way to survival. I've been preparing my whole life for something like this, he added. Alex credited his survival to his skills as a competitive gamer and to his love of kung fu movies. And just one day after the attack, he was asking if someone out there could crop her out of all of his photos. Alex agreed that he probably spent too much time in front of screens, but is adamant that he never cheated. He said that he did have Tinder on his phone before they were together, but deleted it after they got into a committed relationship. I barely had time to hang out with my one girlfriend, let alone another girl. 
Basically, she was delusional, he said. He even went as far as admitting that he did have a low sex drive due to his fatigue from gaming so much. That low sex drive may have been what was convincing Emily that he was not interested anymore, but he claims that she had baselessly accused him of cheating on many other occasions before this even happened. He said that he would get accused of cheating if a woman simply liked one of his photos on social media. Emily has denied all of this, however. When it came to the red hair in the drain, it could have come from his own beard hair, which was slightly ginger, or from his dog, who had patches of reddish hair. Alex had been stabbed 26 times. He had to undergo six major surgeries. He had to have 150 staples placed all over his body, 45 on his head alone. But he was able to make a recovery and was even able to have his fingers reattached. He will likely be in physical therapy for a very long time, but he's alive. Emily didn't have much of a case in court. This was very clearly a premeditated attack, whether she pulled it off well or not. She had directly told officers, I was trying to kill him for cheating. That was my purpose. Doesn't really get any more clear than that. In fact, the deputy prosecutor, Anna Klein, said that the amount of premeditation that went into this attack was, quote, huge and probably more than the court has ever seen. Emily pled guilty to first degree attempted murder. She was facing 20 years in prison. However, given that she had no prior criminal record, Alex survived and she called 911 herself, it was reduced to 19 years. <laughs> Alex's family was not happy with this at all. They felt she deserved much more time, as she did fully intend to kill their son. Emily argued that she deserved much less time in prison, as she had childhood trauma, stating that she had been assaulted as a child and had difficulty forming relationships. Her psychologist stated that she did have PTSD, but felt that it was irrelevant to the case. The judge decided that, due to the premeditation and the sheer violence of the attack, she should serve an amount of time at or near the maximum sentence. Her 19-year sentence stayed, and she was also ordered to undergo a mental health and domestic violence evaluation. She is no longer allowed to contact Alex or anyone in his family in any way, and has to pay $3,359 in restitution. Alex has made a lot of improvement in getting his life and body back together. His fellow PUBG gamers even set up a GoFundMe page where they raised thousands of dollars towards his recovery. When asked about how he feels towards Emily, he responded, I haven't spoken with her if that's what you mean. She called the authorities and saved my life. I hope that counts for something. It's a bit complicated. Regardless, I assume she needs some serious help. Emily is currently serving her sentence in Washington Correction Center for Women. Alex was released from the hospital and currently lives as great of a life as he can, keeping those spirits up. I didn't see it coming, but it makes sense that it happened, said Alex. She obviously didn't want anyone else to have me, so samurai sword. Thank you again for watching my videos. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, if you don't mind, leaving a like really helps the video to get seen by others, and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more cases like this. If you'd like, I do have a Patreon, and you could support the channel on there. Speaking of which, a special shout out to my current top tier patrons. Cami Lu, Kim Peek, Lux Alpaca, Charity, Skooky Mane, Foxlicity, Jackie, and Lavenderwise. You guys are the best. And once again, thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this episode.